It is the UFC debut for Sugar Sean O'Malley, the darling of Dana White's. Oh no, good combination by O'Malley. Your return. When it takes all round, and do this. And he took oh. him down again. O'Malley with another takedown. That's how you finish the fight. And still undefeated, Sugar. Sean O'Malley! Unknown to many in the spotlight at UFC 306, Sean O'Malley encountered issues greater than just Marab Duvalishvili's physical skill. He confronted something far more challenging, his unraveling. As the ground grew dark and the spectators cheered loudly, the pressure became evident to stem from Mirab's persistent wrestling style. It was coming from within. Why did a hopeful athlete appear to break down so soon? What reflects on the psychological challenges that carry the same weight as the hits in martial arts competition? At UFC 306's climax, Sean O'Malley's breakdown reveals the necessity of more than just skills for holding on to power. Let's begin by examining each stage of O'Malley's climb to his developing UFC 306 performance. This arrogant battler with his wild rainbow-colored hair and highly original striking approach was an instant hit. His knockouts were electrifying, his ego enchanting, and he was a personality like no other. Politics fans and the media especially saw him as the next John Kavanagh-trained bantamweight king in the making. What set O'Malley on his rise through the UFC ranks was more than just his skill, it was also his demeanour. He named himself Mentally Undefeated, foolishness that became the brand of the man. While each win was emphatic, he was doing it in fashion, using social media savvy and smooth talk to advertise himself. Still, signs of it surfaced much earlier than UFC 306, despite all the bravado that white men displayed. O'Malley stepped into UFC 306 as a favourite, but this did not reduce the level of tension of the fight. His opponent, Mirab Duvalishvili, was an unrelenting wrestler who liked to try to choke out his opponents with pressure. This was not just about the style of the game, because what people saw was the two teams challenging the other in terms of wit. Will O'Malley's fancy striking and flashy taekwondo work against Mirab's hard-nosed ground-and-pound wrestling? Both the fighters had not spread harsh words for each other as the hype for the fight built up. What O'Malley had accomplished that was so effective was drawing his opponent into the bout with the express purpose of getting into his opponent's head, and that's what this fight was. Outside the cage, there was a lot of and forth in the media, and was everything set for a quintessential MMA face-off. But as the fight neared, some fans and pundits wondered, did O'Malley expect this? Could his mentality befit him for the task of dealing with a grappler such as Mirab? The fight itself was as surreal as it can get. Everything was wrong with O'Malley right from the moment the bell rang to signal the start of high school. The dominant and obvious self-confidence was missing, his movement was choppy and his punches were not as precise as they normally were. Instead, Marab emerged fully charged with energy being Keurig's trademark and sought to dominate O'Malley on a circular level. For the first time, O'Malley looked as flat as a pancake. Marab, by suffocating O'Malley's reach, quickly seized him and got him to the ground while dominating him for most of the round. O'Malley's corner, specifically his corner man and coach Tim Welch, looked more worried than often seen before, and there was tension in the exchanges between them. I was quite amused at how Tim and Marab had to be separated by Herb Dean, the referee of the bout, because of so much talking. O'Malley did not have much time to catch his breath in the first round. At the end of it all, it was obvious that Mirab had a better deal, but the worst thing was O'Malley's non-verbals. It was quite strange to see him, knowing that he was going to war, he looked more like a man who did not want to go to war. 
a lost bear. Hey, stop that! Hey, hey. If round one was a test, then round two was the start of the finish. O'Malley again couldn't escape from the takedown of Marab, as in the previous rounds, as he was dominated by the wrestler for most of the round. During the grappling, Marab once kissed O'Malley's back, but in return was punched by O'Malley at some point. The fight was turning into some sort of a movie scene. More importantly from our point of view, O'Malley was getting visibly discouraged. His corner worked on him during the break before the round started, but it seemed as if the Irishman O'Malley was not getting the message. Was the pressure too much? Was he burdened by expectations and exhausted by the daily working life of Marab? By round three, fans and commentators alike began to notice something strange. The fight was not proceeding according to the script and O'Malley was still being awarded credit on the scorecards. Despite the continued attack from Marab, O'Malley was able to score a couple of punches in the closing stages of the round, much to clinch the round in his favour on the scorecard of two judges. However, all the evidence pointed in Marab's direction since the injury appeared to have stalled Kennedy's progress. The question was not which way O'Malley could afford to go and how he was going to win a fight, but whether he had the mental stamina to make the turn. Could he rise to the occasion and prove that he's worth the title? The signs were visible as round 4 began. Despite being physically worn out, O'Malley appeared to be mentally broken. Marab successfully imposed his will on the fight by delivering ground and pound attacks. O'Malley lingered on his corner during rounds and his head lowered and knees touched. The physical challenges weren't the only factor here. O'Malley appeared to lose his determination. The longer the fight continued, O'Malley lost his desire to win. He was fighting to survive. It could be that that moment revealed the most about the whole competition. Did the intense moment, the harsh glare and the taunting overpower him? Did he weaken his resolve before he weakened in the match? In round 5, O'Malley might have earned a second opportunity. In a shocking turn of events, he hit Marab's torso with a kick that cost him pain. The audience finally realised their desire when the fighter showed some life during the pivotal moment. In severe pain with his stomach tightly gripped, he grabbed his body and provided O'Malley a moment to wrap up the match. But O'Malley didn't seize it. He declined to launch the offensive and this made Marab able to climb back up and retake the lead. The crowd was stunned. Why did an athlete with severe stakes back off from such an obvious advantage? This involved more than a strategic mishap. This showed the most obvious mark that O'Malley's mind had weakened. Not driven by exhaustion or waning willpower, he failed to seize the opportunity and strike his opponent down. Within the UFC, that decision spells disaster. Following the conclusion of the fight, O'Malley's loss went beyond the title, meaning he also sacrificed something crucial. When fighters fall shot in combat, they commonly communicate their thoughts with the media in the cage or as a part of the press conference. Competition dictates that this signifies toughness during tough times. O'Malley did neither. He avoided the cage after the fight and didn't attend the press conference either. A fighter who relied on confidence and charm noticeably avoided addressing the media. It led to a discussion about his psychological well-being. Did he feel so overcome by the defeat that he could not stand by the press? 
Is he cracking under the pressure in a fashion we've previously not noticed? This lack resembled the way Ronda Rousey behaved following her heavy losses at the hands of Holly Holm and Amanda Nunez, another fighter who found it hard to address her defeats. How does this bout reflect on Sean O'Malley? Is he fundamentally the same fighter who looked bound for success, or has UFC 306 uncovered a greater challenge? While physical ability matters significantly, the feature is what sets apart excellent players. I will say that I do think that Sean got exposed, not just in terms of his wrestling, but I think that his mental strength might have been exposed as well. I mean, I do think that it's ironic that the same guy who loves to brag about himself being quote mentally undefeated after his first fight against Cheeto looked so visibly rattled after the second round. I mean, seriously, the most interesting and dramatic parts of this fight wasn't even the fight itself. Marab was so clearly ahead in this fight that the best parts of the match ended up being Marab and Tim Welch getting warned by Herb Dean not to argue with each other during the rounds and listening to the commentators shit on Herb Dean for urging Marab to engage even when he was winning and working. O'Malley had shown flashes of brilliance in the past, but this fight exposed something more concerning. When he faces setbacks, he crumbles swiftly. Rather than merely suffering a setback, he demonstrated a mental collapse. In the UFC world, winning isn't easy and champions need to demonstrate more than rapid knockouts. It requires a strong determination. Will O'Malley be able to bounce back from this? Does he have the ability to bounce back and prove that this was just a flawed night? Has the plan been set for upcoming rivals to take advantage of his weaknesses? For Sean O'Malley, the future is unclear. Sean O'Malley needs to reassess his technique in both wrestling and his mental strength. Building a UFC champion isn't instantaneous. This setback may turn into a significant advancement or be the first step down in his journey. One thing's for sure though, for O'Malley to remain a force in the sport, he has to show that he's beyond just being a flashy attacker. He should prove that he can cope with difficulties and endure long-term effort, and then display his aptitude for succeeding under stress. What position does this put us as fans? From becoming an established fighter to potentially claiming the title for himself, O'Malley had all the signs of a future champion, yet UFC 306 displayed another side of him. Now it's up to you to decide. Can we say O'Malley lost championship potential due to that setback? O'Malley may not recover fully, but he certainly has much to demonstrate. What do you think? Will this define the moment that judged O'Malley's mental strength? Or do his capabilities face an inquiry? Let us know your thoughts 